Welcome to another presentation about the Carolina Bays. Today I will discuss the story of how the inverted stratigraphy in the rim of a Carolina Bay was found. We have to start with some geological principles. Sedimentation is the deposition of particles that are suspended in a fluid such as water or air. The body of the Great Sphinx of Giza consists of layers of minerals that were deposited over millions of years and then bonded together to form sedimentary rock. The exposed rock has been eroded by wind and rain, revealing the layers of the sediment. The sedimentary layers are formed horizontally, level to the surface of the earth, but they may become inclined when the ground is moved by tectonic forces. Inverted stratigraphy is the result of moving sediment deposited at a deeper level to a higher level. We see inverted stratigraphy in anthills or when we dig holes in the ground. Inverted stratigraphy, also called reverse stratigraphy, can be created by geological processes when the latest material falls and flips over on top of new sediment and it is progressively varied by newer material. Such events can be triggered by rock slides or other events that cause the strata of a deposit to be flipped or reversed. The rims of impact craters also have inverted stratigraphy. This was shown by Eugene Shoemaker in his study of Meteor Crater in Arizona. This image by Eugene Shoemaker shows the overturned flap in the raised rim of Meteor Crater, which is a characteristic of all impact craters. Overturned flaps always have inverted stratigraphy. In 2017, I published a paper titled A Model for the Geomorphology of the Carolina Base. The paper introduced the glacier ice impact hypothesis, which proposed that the Carolina Bays are the remodeled remains of oblique conical craters formed on ground liquefied by the seismic shock waves of secondary impacts of glacier ice boulders ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet. The glacier ice impact hypothesis explains all the features of the Carolina Bays and Nebraska rainwater basins, including their elliptical shape, radial orientation, raised rims, undisturbed stratigraphy, absence of shock metamorphism, overlapping bays, and the occurrence of bays only in unconsolidated ground. In addition, the glacier ice impact hypothesis predicts that the raised rims of the Carolina Bays will have inverted stratigraphy characteristic of impacts and that glass carried by the glacier ice projectiles might be found at the bottom of some bays where the ice boulders stopped. My neighbor, Adam Glass, was very interested in my paper regarding the Carolina Bays and he wanted to write an article about the bays, so he was doing a lot of research. On January 17, 2018, he sent me a document with some additional questions about ways in which professional geologists and other scientists could test the glacier ice impact hypothesis. He said, Hi Tony, working away here. I just reread the geomorphology piece and it is so convincing and elegantly written that it puts my clumsy efforts to shame. I just have to keep reminding myself that my job is not to duplicate telling the story of your work, but to dramatize and humanize the glacier ice impact hypothesis and the conflicts around it, as well as your personal story, so that your theory captures the attention it deserves. I hope I can be successful in this effort. One of the sections of the article outline I'm putting together involves listing ways in which the glacier ice impact hypothesis could be tested by professional geologists studying it without any agenda or belief in regard to the younger dry ice impact hypothesis. Adam provided several suggestions, and his sixth suggestion was find inverted stratigraphy in overturned flaps. You mentioned this in the paper. To me, it seems doable. If I'm reading the following materials correctly from the Bunch Melt Products paper, an inverted layer has already been found without trying to look for it. Adam was referring to the paper by Ted Bunch and 17 co-authors published in 2012 with the title Very High Temperature Impact Melt Products as Evidence for Cosmic Airburst and Impacts 12,900 Years Ago. The paper describes SLOs, which are siliceous scoria-like objects, and spherules. Both SLOs and spherules are composed of shock-fused vesicular siliceous glass, which is texturally similar to volcanic scoria. The SLOs are irregularly shaped. Adam wrote, This is what the article says at page E1905 about a proxy-rich layer taken from a Carolina Bay. Quote, A peak in both SLOs and spherules occurs in a 15 cm thick interval beginning at 190 cm below the surface above the clay section, extending up to 175 cm below the surface. 
Three optically stimulated luminescence OSL days were obtained at 183, 152, and 107 centimeters below the surface, and the OSL date of 12.96 plus or minus 1.2 thousand years ago in the proxy rich layer at 183 centimeters below the surface is consistent with Firestone et al. End quote. The reference to Firestone is the 2007 paper that proposed the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis and found that the layer at the Younger Dryas boundary had an abundance of impact spherules and other impact proxies. Adams' letter continued, This is what the note in the SI appendix, page 5, says about taking the sample. Adam highlighted the section that says, quote, Excluding the sample at 152 centimeters below the surface because of the large magnitude of the age reversal, that is, older sediments lying stratigraphically higher than younger sediments. End quote. Adam then asks, The language I highlighted indicates inverted stratigraphy, doesn't it? It certainly does. I have mentioned in previous presentations that in 2012, when Bunch's Melt Products paper was written, the Carolina Bays were thought to have formed by gradualistic wind and water mechanisms, so the significance of the inverted stratigraphy in the core sample from the rim of the bay in Blackville, South Carolina was not recognized. My prediction in 2017 that the raised rims of the Carolina Bays should have inverted stratigraphy was based on my impact experiments that produce elliptical cavities with overturned flaps and on many geological publications describing the characteristics of impact craters. The book by Professor J. Meloche, published in 1989, illustrates the inverted stratigraphy of a crater rim. If we obtain a core sample from the rim of an impact crater, we would see the youngest material in the top layer, followed by older material excavated by the projectile from a deeper layer, and going deeper, we would find the young material that was the surface of the terrain at the time of the impact. This is exactly what was described in the 2012 paper by Ted Bunch. On January 19, 2018, I wrote an email to Ted Bunch and I copied Alan West, Richard Firestone, and George Howard, who were co-authors of the paper. The subject of my email was Core Sample from Blackville, South Carolina. I wrote, My paper about the elliptical geomorphology of the Carolina Base, Zamora 2017, proposes that the Carolina Base originated as inclined conical impact cavities that were later remodeled by viscous relaxation. As a consequence, the raised rims of the base should demonstrate inverted stratigraphy as described by Melosh. I would like to have your opinion about whether your work could already have found the inverted stratigraphy expected for the rims of the Carolina base. Regards, Antonio Zamora. Acknowledgement, I would like to thank Adam Glass for bringing to my attention the apparent inverted stratigraphy. I received a reply from Ted Bunch the same day. Dear Antonio, thank you. Nice to know that someone like you is doing quality research consistent with scientific protocols, in contrast to the poor to non-existent research done by the biased groups. Nothing like good factual data to prove a point. Ted. I took a more careful look at the paper and noticed that there were two core sample locations marked in figure S4. Four days later, I wrote another email. Dear Dr. Bunch, Figure S4A of your paper shows two coring sites, but the paper only describes core number one. What is the story about the second core site? Was a sample taken? Were the results unexpected and discarded? Now that we can attribute the inverted stratigraphy in the rims of the Carolina base to overturned flaps, some things that did not make sense in 2012 may make more sense today. Regards, Antonio Zamora. Ted Bunch replied, Hi Antonio, the second site was not cored. Time and money. Sorry, Ted. This was my last communication with Ted Bunch. I am very grateful to Adam Glass and Ted Bunch for helping me to confirm one of the predictions of the glacier ice impact hypothesis. Sadly, both Adam Glass and Ted Bunch have passed away, but they will be long remembered by all the people with whom they interacted. They are the real heroes of this story. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina Base and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. The Carolina Base should not be neglected. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Base because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic coastal plain. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Base is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Base and other scientific topics.